Well, good morning. Today we'll be talking about uh, color checkers and color correction and uh, so on and so forth. A lot of crazy things over the internet and uh, some of them are true, some of them are not. This is a, a color checker, okay? And you'll be thinking, obviously, why would you want to use this in your workflow? Well, in uh, on honesty, this, this is not a mandatory tool. It is, is not for every job. Uh, but when you need it, it's basically irreplaceable. A color checker is nothing but this type of uh, cardboard or some sort of a paper, plastic material that has, as you can see, this type of colorful chips. Now, the reason you want to purchase one of them is because this is the true representation of the colors uh, as we know. Obviously, there are many hues and saturations, more than you can count and name, but you don't need it. If you start with the basic one, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, uh, yellow, probably you can cover all the spectrums. Now, why would you use this instead of a calibrated display, like I have here in front of me? Well, because if you put probably two, three, four calibrated displays as they are uh, supposed to be from the factory, you put them in a row and you observe uh, your content, you will be that you will realize that there is a slightly uh, misalignment. They they are not necessarily uh, faithful one to, uh, to each other. Uh, what has uh, what happens is probably the best in the business are the Sony X three three hundred or something like this. It costs around thirty thousand euros. And mostly, you know, this type of display, you, you rent them, you don't necessarily purchase them. And definitely there is no need for a YouTube content to be um, graded on, on such a display, though it will be useful. But you as a content creator, it's still, it's still your duty to give to your uh, potential viewers, you know, a truthful, truthful and correct representation of the world as it is. And also it can be you know, a color corrected uh, image can be a, a very solid base for further grading for a certain look that you want to uh, obtain further. Now, as I was saying, you can purchase a very good and expensive calibrated display, but the price will be astronomical compared to something like this, the data color or whatever, non sponsored by them or anything, or x rite or there is other data lab or other manufacturers as well. There are not too many, but it was having one in your package. Another reason to purchase and use a color checker is, is that it's very easy to carry and transport. Uh, you know, this comes in a protective sleeve. Here you go. And you can easily, you know, place it in your backpack or something. Make sure you don't bend it or anything like this. Some of them, uh, some like from x right they come in, in like a, in a very plastic solid wallet and that's very easy to, to carry in your pocket as well compared to a display that obviously needs electricity, needs to be plugged in and so on and so forth, much more inconvenient. Another reason you want to use uh, one of these uh, color checkers is because it looks much more professional on a set. Imagine that you are doing a commercial, a short film, whatever production you're doing and you're just eyeballing the scene with your eyes, like everybody will start kind of panicking, like is this man know what he's doing? How will the exposure be correct? Especially if, you know, there is a very complex shot, which is hard to shoot again, or there is a very lengthy dialogue. Uh, you, you won't know, <laughs> you won't like to, to know at the end of the film that, okay, the image was under or overexposed. So having a color checker or a light meter as well with you gives everything, uh, uh, you know, a feeling of reassurance and okay, this man has a plan, he knows what he's doing, uh, we trust him, let's continue with the shoot. And also, you know, if you've never been in a professional shoot where you are paid and you are ultimately held responsible, you, you'll see that uh, <laughs> instead of regretting, and when you are in the editing room, it's much better to bring this on the, on the set and at least, you, you know, you have uh, the color chips to get an accurate representation. And also you have this uh, gray card to get exposure and white balance and whatnot. So it gives an overall feeling of reassuring and uh, professionalism. One more reason to use a color checker, besides many more, you know, you, you can create your own list, is that every camera comes with its own color signs. And 
That's because the vast majority of, of people obviously are not professional photographers or videographers. They just want to document their life, you know, preserve memory. And, you know, if things look, you know, kind of real, it will pass as, as real. So most of the time, obviously, as I was saying, you, you don't need this accuracy, but it helps. Um, for example, Canon, you know, a lot, a lot of people love Canon ca colors. You know, they are favoring skin tones, Ari as, as well, Sony. They are very good in every other aspects, but sometimes there is a green or magenta hue. So uh, another scenario that comes into my mind is when you are using a multicam techniques. And, and today, you know, on this platform, people are using a mirrorless camera, a drone and an action cam. And uh, obviously they won't be all from the same company. Even if you have a DJI Pocket 3, as you should, and a DJI drone, they are not necessarily the same sensor. So again, if you wants to color match them and why wouldn't you then uh, obviously this, this will help now how are you going to place a, a color checker in front of a drone well that's another story but it's definitely doable so that's kind of my five uh, you know reason why should you use a color checker now before doing the uh, workflow in davinci resolve course this is the uh, editing software that i'm using there are certain pitfalls that you want to avoid uh, before using a, a, a color checker. Number one will be that you need to have this color checker in the light of your subject. Um, I would say that the most of the scenarios that are favoring this are, you know, broadcast shows or potentially sitcoms and other television shows where there is kind of one-to-one -one aspect ratio. You see, if you have a very contrasty light, like something, uh, you know, remember the movie Godfather, it will be quite difficult to use this. Obviously, that movie was shot on film and they didn't use any color checkers. There's no need. But if you have a very contrasty like, uh, light and a lot of people, will, for some reason, they like to use that, then you have to be very careful because if you cast shadows, you know, over the, the color checker like this, even if this is exactly what happens in reality, you see, because the light is somehow coming from this direction, Obviously, there is an, a ratio in my face. This part is much brighter than the other one. But this is not like using a light meter. So you should not, you, you know, shadow part of the color checker uh, in order to get out correct. You have to simply place it in such a way that uh, it's in the light of your subject, but there is not too much reflection or other things that may throw off the uh, metering. Now... The paper that it uses is kind of it's a matte paper, but uh, the edges of it are kind of reflective. So uh, you have to usually what I do, I place it in the light of the subject, but then very slowly I angle it in various direction, hoping that somehow I can avoid uh, at least in some of the frame uh, the reflection. You see, this will be quite quite reflective. This this won't be a good example. Probably here is better, but definitely. You know, don't hide it or sh or shadow it because that don't give you the correct results. Another pitfall that you want to avoid is that you have to convert your images uh, first into Rec. 709 color space. Uh, as I was saying, this is just a piece of cardboard with colorful uh, chips, but this is actually printed okay, by a, by a printing machine. And it's very difficult, almost, I would say, borderline impossible to print something like Rec 2020 color space colors or S log or whatever. So this is, a, this is like sRGB uh, spectrum or Rec 709 if you want to, to extend this to videography. So wh what that means is if you're simply going to, to uh, think that those colors are from other um, color space, you, you will be wrong. It's very important, especially these days when everybody shoots log, to get the maximum dynamic range of your camera, you can't simply uh, try to use this in a log file. That log file needs to be first converted into a Rec. 709, then uh, the tool provided by DaVinci will be much more accurate. And the last thing I just want to touch basis with is uh, don't fall into the pit uh, of try to, uh, to, you know, to, to be lazy and create a generic profile for, for example, daylight, um, artificial light, and whatever other scenarios come into your mind and use this for the rest of your career. Uh, unfortunately, it's not that simple. 
Even today, by doing this video, as you can see, I have a, an artificial light that supposed to be, for example, daylight balanced, but there is also light coming from the window behind me. So in the room, there is a mixture of ambiental and artificial light. Now, today is a sunny day, but imagine that if it's cloudy or it's raining or it's snowing or it's a sunset or a sunrise, the mixture of light that happens in the room will be different. So even if I'm shooting at the same time of the day, for example, 11 o'clock, the color temperature of the overcast day, it will be completely different from a bright sunny uh, summer day. So you can't simply create a profile for, for example, daylight and use this as it is for every environment. Uh, and unfortunately, you have to recreate those profiles every time. As, as I was saying, it's, it's not very difficult. You just, at the end of the beginning of the shot, whatever you want, get the, uh, the color checker in the light of your subject and you're good to go. Okay, good. So you are here. Now, what happens is in order to uh, properly use this uh, data color color checker, obviously you need to uh, record something. And this is your uh, this is your footage as it is. As you can see, you have to place it in the light of your subject. Um, ideally, one to one ratio, but not all the time. I'm using a one to one ratio. Now, as I was saying, you have to convert the images in uh, Rec 709. Uh, this uh, footage has been shot with uh, Sony FX30 in log. So my settings are next. You go here and you choose DaVinci Color Manage. This is how I use it. If you want to use DaVinci YRGB, you probably need to use a lot. Um, why would you do this when DaVinci offers you this for free, this conversion? But I would suggest, first of all, to get rid of the automatic color management and you go into HDR DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and your output color space would be Rec. 2.4. Why is that? Because sometimes uh, you are using multiple cameras and it's better to uh, you have as a timeline DaVinci White Gamut just to accommodate all the possible color sciences behind your cameras. Now, number two is, as you can see, the image still looks very flat. And the reason is that uh, the output being Rec. 709 uh, S gamut is too wide to be uh, shown completely and um, uh, therefore you have to convert to Rec. 709 and to do this is very easy you simply go here and in input color space you'll be choosing whatever you have used I have used S gamut 3 Cine S log 3 and suddenly <laughs> as you can see the image looks uh, much more vivid much more uh, whatever you wanted to call it, contrasty. And, and, and you can say that you, you can leave it as it is. You know, some people, they, they simply do this and there's nothing. But what is the usefulness of, of color checker then? Now, before proceeding further, how are you going to find the frame which has the best representation of the color checker? Well, I would suggest to create a power window. And with the pen tool, you should select initially uh, this uh, black and white chips. And the reason uh, is that is because you want, if you look here in the waveform area, you want this, uh, the color chip to top to be as flat as possible. Okay, so you, you have to find an area where the top of the color chip is flat as a pancake. Is if, for example, here is slanted, but here is, let me see if I can increase, or how do you call that, increase the graticals. Uh, actually, yeah, to be much more graphical, no, not graphical, waveform, yeah, that's it. Uh, you see, you need basically the, the top, the top of, of your waveform for each of those uh, black and white chips. They, they need to be as flat as possible. Let me just readjust a little bit my uh, pen tool. Oops. We don't want to include any colors. And then you simply have to find the frame where this is as flat as possible. And that will, 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 will be, that means that in that particular frame, uh, the, the color checker was, proper, pro, uh, was uh, properly exposed uh, to light. And uh, this is somewhere here, for example. And uh, now we can get rid of these power windows and whatnot, right? 
And as you can see, if you simply look at the, at the waveform here, there is some sort of a reddish tint. Uh, you can also use the qualifier and see exactly. You see, for example, if, I, if I'm pointing at my shirt, which is supposed to be white, as you can see, there is a strong uh, red tint uh, in there. Um, one option would be um, potentially, you know, to simply go here and, uh, for example, we can white balance this. And as you can see, things are, are immediately improved and uh, we can compare the two of them. And there is definitely an improvement by simply doing that. So this is another way of, of using the color checker. But that's not the method I want you to show. So uh, to show you, so uh, what happens is after we have uh, choose, chosen whatever frame we think it's suitable, then we can actually go here and select data color spider checker 24 and we select from here color checker and we simply align the chips uh, with the grid it's very easy to do just takes a little bit of, of uh, vision we can also magnify i can also see you see there is a very strong magenta tint on the palms of my hand so obviously this image is not it's not balanced at all and uh, let's see what will be the the outcome now okay so th that will be uh, the alignment now if you read the manual it tells you that <laughs> you should input uh, the source gamma whatever uh, gamma you have uh, recorded the images so I'm doing it in s log 3 and then as target gamma and target color space this is actually those are actually the settings of your timeline so if you remember uh, I set the timeline to Da Vinci so this is exactly what you want to use uh, a, a, a very common pitfall will be to, to, to set here as target rec 709 this is wrong and I'll show you what the results you're going to get you simply have to, to set up uh, Da Vinci I, I found the best uh, results by using this color temperature again 6500 kelvins this is the color temperature of your display which is a back illuminated device this is not the color temperature of the ambient that you have shot and simply then when you match you press the match button magic happens okay and if you can <laughs> you can clearly see uh, let me get rid of this and uh, play the video you can clearly see that well, the video won't play unless... Yeah, y you can clearly see that there is there is a huge difference. So this is the, the image uh, without the with, without any color correction. And this is the image color corrected. Like you can simply see how beautiful uh, the all the uh, t color tint has been removed. You look at the... If you look at the waveform here, you can see that initially it was a very strong red tint uh, rent hue and now it's much more balanced much more better ultimately you can prefer any of this look but you have to understand that this will be basically the the base of your grade and if you want to make it more warm th this is not color accurate this is just a look that come that will come from your sensor or whatever and even if remember even when when we white balanced uh, the initial scene it, it will look like this but now once we have all the colors uh, corrected you get a much better and much more accurate representation of uh, of what is supposed to be in the scene so it is it is quite simple and uh, quite a unique tool and I think it's uh, should be part of, of any cinematographer or videographer uh, toolkit now this is again what I want you to remember is that be, when you convert the images from uh, log to rec 709 just remember to have your timeline in uh, DaVinci white gamut intermediate and when you go here in the, in the uh, color uh, match palette remember to have target gamma and target color space as DaVinci and not as uh, rec 709 um, I can show you wh what will happen for example if we can reset this node and uh, we, we, 
we have uh, again we have to find uh, that uh, particular frame for example here and we have to do the same uh, arrangement Okay, now if we're going to select S log 3 and Rec 7 of 9, which is here, and then you match, everything explodes. <laughs> uh, and, and you get this uh, type of result. Now you can probably, probably you can go there and simply try to bring everything down like I, I don't know you may try to, to play with the uh, it, it doesn't really work and um, or what you can do is to go into the project here and actually set it to uh, but even then even then you see it, it, it just doesn't work in order to correct the image so you see you get an absolute an absolute uh, disastrous results if you do it uh, as I was saying in the wrong way so I hope that was helpful and uh, see you next time